I wonder if they're Rorschach tests. Yeah, Rorschach. Inmate quarters. Watch drove me a strong metal. This must lead to the secure ward of the hospital. It's locked shut. I can't open it. Well, darn it. Well, I think... This. Half a shilling. That is sixpence. Ah, perfect. Let's, I thought it might be that. Thank you, sir. Here you are. About the asylum? What can you tell me about the asylum? Alright. You know, there are always voices coming from the place at night. Crying, singing, and the inhabitants cursing like damned souls. That's the usual. This night was different. It was all silent. I tell you, not a single noise in the whole street. I looked at the madhouse and saw all of the windows were black. No lights. Everybody asleep in the place? Now that's strange. Then I heard it. It was a scream like no other I'd heard before. Not from a ma not of a man or a woman, but of the devil of a devil from hell. That is very curious indeed. Thank you for telling me. Sure. Goodbye, boy. Goodbye, sir. Okay, well, I can give her this newspaper. This puzzles seem fairly easily. They seem fairly easy right now. I wonder if they'll get more difficult. Why, thank you kindly. How thoughtful you are. My goodness, how quickly things change in the outside world. What an idiot! This is the hospital archive, where a record of patient, where a record of each patient must be stored. Mr. Dupre was really committed to East Hill. His file should be here somewhere. Portrait of a strained patient surrounded by caretakers and a doctor. That's not depressing whatsoever. It's been a long time since this desk was last used. It's covered in a in discarded papers and pens, and a noticeable layer of dust. <laughs> the doors are all locked. What? Okay. This cabinet contains many documents detailing the treatment of patients, ranging from two decades ago to last year. This file's right here. Dupre Alexandre, room 108A. In my locker, small sign reads seized objects. Uh. Some personal effects, probably sent in by the patient's families, but deemed unsafe by the caretakers. One of them is a stack of thick sheets of paper, carelessly bound together, bearing drawings and paintings of a troubled mind. Aww. Link up of pictures and their frames. See all these dates on this cabinet prior to 1870, only for more recent. All the files are missing, as if they have been torn out. Only one p little piece of paper remains. An address written on it. Paul Street, 26. Could it be that Alex where Alexandre Dupre lived before he was committed to the hospital? Paul Street. I should follow this new lead and see where it takes, if it takes me somewhere useful. I'm... I was gonna say, I'm not really done, like... Idiot. That's nice. They don't just take you to the next location. That would be so annoying. Hey, bro, I got your drawings. Here, are these your drawings? Great wonder, they're back! 
Some day they will understand light and shape as I understand them. Thank you, friend. If you want, take these cardboard sheets. Thanks to you, I have no more need of them. Blah, blah, blah. They look like Rorsch. A few folded cardboard sheets, each one of them with a large symmetrical patch of black ink in the middle. I've heard of this technique, but always thought it an eccentricity. Patients are supposed to see in them the deeper causes of their ailment. First card. Ooh. Rorschach! The Rorschach blots. Let's go. Ah, awesome. Looks like a butterfly. That looks like a beetle. Almost like insects. Yeah, I know. I would say this could be a face. I'd say that's pretty obviously a face. Like that, that one is not trying to hide. Alright, I'll probably be back. I probably want to get into the ward. The ward where he lived. It's nighttime suddenly. That leads back. This is door number 24. I'm looking for number 26. Number 26. This is the place I'm looking for. But the door is bricked up. Must find another way to get in. Fall Street. It ends here at this corner. So I'm gonna get into that apartment. Or I'm gonna go around the back. The ruins of an old chapel, apparently destroyed by fire. A mess of wooden planks and the remains of benches and chairs. There is someone on their knees praying, their faces covered by a hood. Oh, whoa, my mouse scared it away. One cross remains almost intact. An improvised altar covered in candles. I'm sorry to bother you, but do you know why the house next door has been bricked up? Excuse me. I'm gonna take. With this candle, we can light my way through the dark. Looks like this hole leads to the next build building next door. Ah, yes. Holy cow. Oh, I love the foreground. It's gorgeous. Jeez, why would you ever? This must be the interior of the bricked up house I saw on the street. Mr. Dupre's former residence. I cannot tell who is depicted in the portrait since it's so badly damaged. It seems someone crushed it to the, into the floor. The door is bricked up. Great. There is something amongst the ashes. It looks like a piece of paper. With something written on it. V D. Silly. It's slightly burnt on one side, and some of the letters are missing. Alright. A military medal. There is a relief of Our Majesty the Queen, and several pieces of metal engraved with the names of battles unknown to me. I'll take this with me. Maybe it will mean something to one of Alexandre's fellow patients in the hospital. I like this. I like this different locations. It's really neat. One man in uniform. He's missing an arm. A few books remain on the shelf. Mostly doubtful treaties on chemistry and alchemy. Among the titles are Trithimus... Trithimus... Miuses. You don't... 
Oh, they made a horrible grammatical error with his name. You don't put the second S, you just put an apostrophe. I can't help it, guys. I'm in English. De lapide philosophico. Graeber is de, de inventione veritatis. The anonymous work, Turbla Philosophorum. And Ludwig Prinz, Mysteries of the Worm. A large metal safe. It requires a combination of four numbers. Oh, I don't know the numbers. I don't know the numbers. Alright. I think I've done what I can here. That metal goes to the lady in the asylum. She'll tell me something, I'm sure. Oh, I just noticed the flame in there is flickering. With little tiny pixels. Sorry. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Will you talk to me now? Can you anything about this? Uh, cards. Candle. Piece of metal. I didn't think so. I wonder if we'll get into that other apartment. I like how I still have a candle. So here's my question. Have things like changed slightly from me being in another location and finding stuff? Well, you're the same. That doesn't surprise me. Oh! Maybe he... Maybe it's him. This metal! I had one just like this. Got it after the battles in Lang's Neck and Mal... Majubla Hill in 1881. A decade ago now. For distinguished conduct in the field, it said. What a farce. So you were in the army, as I thought. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Dr. Wakefield. Sergeant William Con Hill, Her Majesty's Sixth Light Infantry. Are you one of... Are you another one of those alienists? Do you doctors not realize that, that cowardice cannot be cured by your arts? Why are they keeping you here? The doctors say I suffer from a nervous disorder. I believe this is a term for what they themselves, with all their learning, do not know what to say. But I know the true name of my sickness. It is pure cowardice. I am looking for a former patient of this hospital. You may have met him? His name is Alexandre Dupre. Yes, I did know a man by that name. We met briefly. He was here when I arrived. What do you know about him? He was a proper lad. Educated, he listened closely to the stories of other inmates, but he kept his own to himself. We talked a lot. He was very close to Miss Connay, too. I think they got the same here at the same time. But when he left, he did so alone. I wonder what beca has become of him since. Who is this Miss Connay? She's a patient here. The lady with the temp tempestuous character. You may have encountered her already. She has not been the same since Mr. Dupre left, you know. She always sits off to the side, alone and silent. I doubt you could talk to her at all, even if you tried. She sees... she sees things, or at least she thinks she does. What did you talk about, uh, you and Mr. Dupre? We talked a lot about my time in South Africa, the South of Africa. I don't like to talk about that, but he somehow made me want to. He was so persuasive. 
He was very interested in one specific story, almost obsessive about it. He wanted to know every little detail. Could you tell me that story? I'm trying to find a patient of mine who has gone missing, and this could be my only hope of finding him. I don't like to relive those memories. A missing patient, you say? I... Alright. Maybe my story will be of some use then. It happened during the Battle of Majuba Hill. Majuba... Majuba Hill. I am sure you have heard of it. In March of, eight, of 81. The attack of the Boer army... See, I know about that. I don't know much else about the wars in Africa. Had taken us by surprise, and our regiment was forced to split up. We quickly found ourselves alone, just a few men lost on, a bar on the barren plain. But I don't want to bore you. No, sir, you certainly aren't. Please continue. Oh yes, we get like a cutscene? As I said, we were few, and we were sure the enemy was lurking out there. In the cold air of dusks, a thick fog formed quickly, masking everything around us. We could barely see each other. Then others started to disappear into the fog, which was getting thicker. I could hear their footsteps for a while, then nothing. I called the names aloud, even though I knew I shouldn't. Something about the fog terrified me. I felt something in there, not far. A war, a murmur, or a beating. Something alive, waiting. I couldn't help walking towards it. All of a sudden, my feet felt something in the mud. A body. They were all there, dead. Only Captain Skid was missing. Holy shit, this would be so terrifying. Then the mist cleared out. What had happened? I never knew for certain. I didn't see anything. Or if I did, my mind refused to bear such memories. What happened to Captain Skid? When he finally regained consciousness, it was like someone else looked out at us through his eyes. I guess whatever happened to him affected him, changed him. I, knew, I know he came back to London. Mr. Dupre asked me of his whereabouts. Maybe he tried to contact him to hear the rest of the story. He was quite preoccupied by it. Hmm. Do you know where I could find Captain Skid? The last I heard from fellow veterans, he had lost himself to a frenzy of alcohol, opium, and bad company. This downward spiral led him, as many others, to a wretched nadir. A dirty hole, deep in St. Giles' rookery known as the Crimson Nest. Mayhap you will find him there, alive even, if you are lucky. Here, this is a picture of our regiment. You can see him there. Is he the tall dude with the darker hat? Alright. Thank you very much. This is so neat. I love like going to the different locations like we're not just stuck it's also like this is really well it is a mystery what's happened we're trying to figure it out because we still don't really know what's going on like I'm very confused about what happened between the third and fourth episode and what is going on there so guess we'll find out this is the slum of St. Giles. The Crimson Nest shouldn't be far.
Wait, this is our dream. No, no, no. That really wasn't what I wanted. This was our dream. Oh my god, do you not recognize it? Um, I don't like this. Their sound design is so good. This man, he looks like the man from my nightmares. He is blind in one eye. The empty socket glistens in the lamplight. Ew. He seems to want something from me. In my dream, the man said, give me back what he took. 